That means that Terror Dawn is a... A COMMUNIST! Alright, you scantily clad, clearly an adult yet is apparently a minor, you beat up that commie for old glory! Terror Dawn rips off the scarves that were hanging off of her belt and wraps them around Cinnamon's head. While she tosses Cinnamon into the ground, she gives an abridged version of her Soviet backstory and how she was felled years ago by another American superhero. Cinnamon gets smashed into the ground and Terror Dawn just keeps wailing on her, knocking her face into the ground and even driving a car into her. Since you chose to defend this land of wretched excess, it's only fitting that the symbol of crass commercialism serves as your tombstone. Rest in peace. You were a valiant foe, but you fought for an evil cause. That cause being underage bikini modeling. Minutes later, Terror Dawn is at it again, ripping out the sign of a McDonald's analogy. I hope the idiots inside this restaurant are enjoying their last meals. How tacky, offering fast food for a final meal. Ha 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 ha. Cinnamon returns the earlier car smashing by smashing a van down into Pterodon. She says she'd hit her again with the van, but doesn't want to kill her. And look at this. Is this what you think of when you think tossing away a van? She looks like she's posing for a beachwear catalog. Pterodon starts hallucinating under all the pain inflicted on her that she's meeting Stalin. Oh, and by the way, despite the fact that she's punching Pterodon in different poses and positions, Cinnamon's face never changes expression whatsoever. Heck, her lips don't even move. I guess the creators thought it'd be better to have an entire comic where she spoke telepathically. And so then Mulder and Scully show up with Boris and Natasha and WAIT A SECOND! Freaking Mulder and Scully show up with Boris and Natasha! What? 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 You know what? Screw it. Let's just move on. Anyway, despite not calling themselves by those names, it's clearly them, so I'm just going to call them that. Boris and Natasha say that Pterodon is partially the responsibility of the Soviets, so they've come to assist in her capture. Cinnamon asks Scully if she can leave, but then also comments, By the way, your partner's kind of foxy. Really? I hadn't noticed. This isn't funny! We cut to an epilogue where we see the aforementioned heartbreaker killing cops. Oh, and it's a completely different artist now, which is really odd since it doesn't seem like the first 17 pages would have required that much time to draw thanks to their lack of detail. All that happens here is that he vows to get revenge on the cops. The heartbreaker himself is apparently just a luchador, which begs one to wonder why they didn't just shoot the guy. Following the main story are a bunch of extras. You know how Watchmen had like newspaper clippings and advertisements and book excerpts to help build up their universe? Well, this is kind of like that. Except it's stupid and pointless. Anyway, we also get a backup story giving the origin of Terror Dawn. Apparently she was an American girl named Dawn in 1952 who was brought by her boyfriend to a bunch of Soviet spies. That red flag! You... you're commies! Yep, darn tootin' we are. Yeah, because as we all know, communism was big in the South during the Cold War. They strap Dawn to a table and use some sort of machine to turn her into a human engine of destruction. Billy Ray, how can you let them do this? I thought you loved me. Believe me, baby, I do. But I love Stalin more. Then why don't you strap Stalin to the table? That'd be kind of cool. Super Stalin! They plan to do this to as many people as possible and destroy the country within with an army of super people. A race of atomic supermen which will conquer the world. They transform her into a winged engine of destruction. Also, the transformation apparently also destroyed her clothes. Again, it's not like people were picking this comic up for its plot, so why aren't you just doing porn already? This also apparently destroys the machine, even though we don't see it happening. Jeez, this is a pretty destructive little machine here. Stalin was even nice enough to provide a costume for her, which is apparently a pair of jeans, go-go boots, and a phantom lady top. Damn you, communism! We switch to Terror Dawn attacking a gas station. This is the lifeblood of modern America. Let's see how far your cars drive now. So what, Soviets drove hybrids or something? The superhero duo of Celestion and Celestial Girl arrive to stop her, though for some reason Celestion is wearing Catman's old costume. Some onlookers scream out for them to defeat Terror Dawn. Rip her wings off! Rip her clothes off too! Oh. Apparently Celestion has moral qualms with hitting women, so it falls to Celestial Girl to use an atomic ray gun to shoot her. The ray gun sends Pterodon out into the Pacific Ocean. And that's it. That's our story. No explanation for how she got different clothes or how she ended up underneath an island. Hmm. 
This comic is awful. It's not funny, it's not entertaining, and while it may fit some people's perceptions of sexy, it certainly doesn't fit mine. There is a feminist message here, though. And that message is, it isn't feminist, so throw this piece of crap away! So long and thanks for all the fish, so sad that it should come to this. We try to warn you all.